this last lesson, we were creating a crossword and you should have something a little bit like this. Um, so in this case, I've created the crossword as a table in HTML. So here's my table tag. And then I've made some squares which actually have the word written in them, but the word is hidden because I made the color of the text the same as the color of the background. So what I'm going to do in this lesson is I'm going to show you how you can have a space to type in answers and then if you type in the correct answer, then it's going to fill in the word using a little bit of JavaScript program code. So the first thing is we need to make a space where you can type in an answer. So I'm just going to go right down to the bottom of my HTML file. And this is where we made the across and down headings and this is where I've made my test question. So I've only got one question in my crossword at the moment. And now what I'm going to do is to put a form into my crossword. Now a form is basically just an area where a person can type in some data. OK, so I write a form tag and then I write a slash form. And inside my form, I'm going to make an input and this allows you to type in some text. Um, and now input is a little bit special because most HTML commands need to have a slash, so slash input. But input is actually an, one of those odd one out commands, um, so you don't need to put the slash input. What I like to do is put a slash at the end of the brackets to show that there is no slash input. Um, and that is also an accepted way to write it, but you don't need to put a slash input. The reason for that is really just a historical mistake. So now if I reload, you can see that we've now got this box and we can type things into the box. Now the idea is that you're going to be able to type the answer. So in this case, it would be Mercury. And then when you press enter, it's going to fill in um, the word in the box. OK, now in order to do that, we need to write some JavaScript program. So I go to the top. Now we've already used two languages in our program. We've got HTML, which is what most of our web page is written in. And we've also got CSS, which is what the style is written in. But we now want to use some JavaScript and you do that by writing script. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the different details of JavaScript programming because that's an enormous topic um, and you don't have to know anything about JavaScript for IGCSE. So um, it's much more important uh, to, for us to study Python because that's what you will eventually get examined on if you want to do IGCSE. But I'm just going to show use a little bit of JavaScript in this lesson um, to make the crossword do what we want. So what I'll do is I'll write function check answer. OK, now the first thing I need to do is I need to get the answer that the user typed in. So I'm going to write let answer equal document dot query selector input. Now, if this all sounds like gobbledygook to you, don't worry. All you've got to do is basically just copy it in. Um, so this is going to find that input box. Now I'm going to get the text out of that input box. So I'll put dot value. OK, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a for loop. Now in JavaScript, it looks a little bit different in Python. I'm going to write for let node of document dot query selector all td like this and then i'm going to say if node dot class name dot index of answer greater than equal to zero node.style equals color colon black. Now, I hope I've got all this right because I'm just kind of making up as I go along, but I think this should work. So what we're doing is this will read the text that's typed into the box and store that as the answer. 
then it's going to go through all of the TD parts of our HTML and it's going to look for the name of the class written on that TD and see if the answer is contained in the name. And if it is, then it's going to change the text color to black so that we should see the answer. Now for this to work, what we have to do is everywhere that we write in a letter of word, we have to put class equals and then write in the word that this letter belongs to. So in this case, this M is part of the word Mercury. And so is the E and the R. So I've just got to add in these words down here. Mercury, Mercury. OK, now what I want to do is when I enter data here, I want to run my JavaScript function. And the way we do that is on our form, we say on submit equals JavaScript colon check answer. Like that. OK, now hopefully this is going to work. Like I said, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. So I hope this is I haven't tested it before. I hope this is going to work fine. Um, so if I type Mercury and press enter. Ah, now it did appear, but then it um, disappeared again. And I think that's because it reloaded the page. So there's a way to fix that. What I'll do is write action equals JavaScript colon null. I've just moved that window out of the way so that you can see this. So we've got form on submit equals JavaScript colon check answer. So this means when you enter data into the form, we're going to do the check answer JavaScript function. And action equals JavaScript null. That means that when we have entered all the data for the form, I don't want to do anything. So let's try that again. And then I'll type Mercury. Press enter. Excellent. Right. OK, so that fills in our word. Now, there is a little bit of a catch in this because at the moment I can actually just type part of the word. So if I take, for example, a completely different word like fibble and then press enter, that doesn't do anything. But if I type part of the word mercury like mercury, it does still fill in the word. So that's not ideal. There is a way to fix that. What I'll do is I will make the answer the word mercury, but inside um, some quotation marks. So these are single quotation marks, which I'm adding at the beginning and end of the word. And then inside here, I'll have to put those quotation marks around mercury. Make sure that the word, the full word is entered and not just part of the word. So now if I reload and I type in Mercury, it doesn't show anything, but if I type Mercury, then it does show the word. Now let's say that I have another word that goes across the middle. So let's say that um, for example, um, I have the word um, CPU going through C. So uh, if I look down here, there's the C. So then I'll have P and U here, and I want to make that match CPU. So I write CPU in quotation marks here. And this box, this C needs to match Mercury and CPU. So I just write them, I can put a space between them like that. So Mercury and CPU, then save that. Now reload. Oh, I better write a question in for CPU. So this is an across question and it's going to be number two. So let's put a superscript in there. Soup two. And then across I actually don't have a question one across at the moment, so I'll just leave that one blank. And then this is going to be question two. 
So this one is going to say um, the brain of the computer, since that's how people often describe a CPU. So if I reload now, now we've got, I've got an empty space for number one. Um, maybe I can find a, a better way to display that in a moment. Um, but I've got one down and I've got two across. So here you can just type in um, the answer. It doesn't need to be typed in for a particular number. So uh, one down, toxic chemical used in LCD monitors, that's going to be mercury. So I type that in and it gets filled in. Um, and now if I want to enter number two, I can put the brain of the computer CPU, press enter. Now, one thing that I notice is that when I type in a word and press enter, the word stays on the screen and I'd really like to get rid of that. So that's easy to do. Um, what I'll do is at the end of this, I'm going to say document dot query selector input dot value equals and then empty quotation marks like that. Um, and now if I reload and type mercury and then that clears the text box for me to type in the next answer. Um, so in this case, um, there is a little bit of JavaScript code. Um, now, guys, if you understand JavaScript, some of you, I think, do have a little bit of knowledge of JavaScript or maybe even more than that. Um, so if you do underst understand JavaScript code, that's absolutely super. But if you don't, don't worry. It's not something that you have to know for the course, but it's just something that if you copy it in, um, and then that allows us to do automatic checking of answers instead of doing it by hand. Um, and you just have to copy in what's written there. Um, now, guys, there's still um, loads of stuff to do on this. So to make this a really good crossword, obviously I would have to add more clues. And also I think that there's lots of CSS style which I could add. So for example, the title uh, is kind of um, plain, um, some of these questions, it would be nice to have some color. It would be nice maybe to use some different text fonts to center this on the screen. Uh, all sorts of things could be improved to make this crossword look more awesome, but I'm going to obviously leave that to you um, and then we'll see uh, what results you're able to come up with.